All right, Wednesday, 15th of April. My name is Luke. This is the show and go. We haven't done it since uh, Friday. How's your long weekend, boys? Oh, yeah. yeah sorry, mate. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> um, good, mate. It's, it's another long weekend in isolation, mate. It's the same yeah. as every other it's a long weekend, month. but it's a long month. So, um, no, nothing too exciting, man. No, I actually enjoyed mine. I've obviously been in the office quite a bit and I'm fortunate enough that I can actually come in there and sort of work on my own. So, I don't know, just grinding away, getting some shit done. You finished the course? No, nah, not yet. I've probably got to, I've got one more to go. So, which is email marketing, which has taken a while, but Jackson's going to do up all the written content and sort of be my first test dummy. So, looking forward to it. But I probably won't launch for a couple of weeks anyway. So, yeah. put some hype around it. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, so model. we'll touch in on a few topics. <laughs> and then tonight I'll do a quick little Q&A if you've got any questions about the drop or, or anything. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> touch in on a few topics. It's been a pretty um, interesting couple of days with the sports news and a bit of pop culture stuff going on as well. Um, you saw the clip of, of Gussie on the news ice. Yeah, I saw it actually. Yeah, quite like funny it. that little when they, especially when they clip it up like that. Yeah, Daily Telegraph rugby league writer Phil Rothfield. Uh, Gus has called your comments absurd. Your response to that? I've got no response to him. How come? I just don't rate his opinion. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it goes without saying, I think. Okay. <laughs> Pretty much, I've just taken a few dot points on it. Don't quote me. I could be a bit off, but Friday, Gus, comes out, defends Channel 9 about everything. Um, Buzz then in his column said that Gus is being absurd and then Gus on what looks like yeah it was a Today Show from what I can see he just sat there cold face and just pretty much said I don't have a response I don't rate his opinion it's probably not news in NRL season or maybe it would be but <laughs> fuck there's not much happening if this is fucking hitting the topics what do you guys reckon you know a bit of Gussie from being at the Panthers and what not ice um, yeah, yeah. So me personally, like I've got a big rap on Gus. I think um, him as an operator of an actual club, he's actually really good. And he put up a quote one time, if you want to keep people happy, like serve them ice cream. So, and that's, that's true. Once you're in business, you can't always seem to keep people happy, especially a thing like a rugby league club. You've got so many stakeholders, you've got the players, you've got the coaches, you've got all the staff, and then you've obviously got the fan base as well. So I think he's conditioned to uh, potentially like, I think this is just my opinion. I think he should be running the NRL. And I know a lot of people hear him on, um, on TV and commentating and sometimes a little bit biased, especially around that origin time, which he should be like, everyone should be biased in origin time. But then they get really pissed off about the things he says, but I don't think he's too far off, but I kind of, I kind of enjoy that little, uh, back and forth. Cause it's too like Gus is like one of the, one of the big dogs in the game. Apparently there's three big dogs in the game and he's one of them. They pull a lot of strings from behind the curtains and um, yeah, everyone knows Buzz is Buzz, so he do, he does what he does. Yeah, Jackson, fellow Jono, what do you reckon? Yeah, like I, I'm I'm actually Team Buzz, shockingly, but um, hey. it's always funny. It's always funny when you hear players like you can't find a player really. I haven't found a player who's had direct involvement with Gus who has a bad word to say about them. So it's everyone who doesn't really know him, doesn't really rate him. So like I've never had a much of a relationship with him other than professionally. And I think he's an absolute knob. So it's like, but ice has obviously been in and around him and rates him. So obviously, you know, there's something to the guy, but in terms of the feud, it just feels awkward. It feels like two old men, like two old neighbors arguing. Like, I just don't think they're, they're part of the future of the game. As much as I said, he wants Gus to be running the show, get some, get some younger blood in there, man. Jesus Christ. Like he's, the, both of those guys have such old school approaches to everything they do. Some Sometimes it's good. Like there's definitely value, especially when Gus breaks down a game. Like I can't really argue with a lot of the things he says when he's breaking down a game, but um, Buzz is just, you know, he's in his age and at this point of his career, he's chasing cliffs as well. So the feud, yeah, it's a bit of fun. It's a bit of a giggle, but it just feels like, it feels like my dad's arguing with an uncle or something. It just feels weird. <laughs> Yeah, I think I have to um, just just off, just off the back of that, and I've talked about this in the past. I like I've thought about this one time when I was sitting in an Uber car, and you actually rate your Uber rating. I feel like journalists should get rated from like people. So like say 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 if he's like a five star journalist, he's just not going to go out and write fucking just start making up different types of um, articles. So you obviously look at um, Wajaver in America, and he's like one of the most well respected. 
uh, journalists in the whole country, if not the whole world. If he says it, it's probably going to happen. So um, I feel like a, I feel like a rating of a five star rating on journalists should happen because they can actually fuck up someone's life. You know what I mean? Like they could write a shit story. I remember who was it? The guy who got they got rid of not too long ago. He wrote a shit story about Steve Maddai cheating and gambling with. Um, like uh, match fixing games and then mm. like they, it's over the paper for, for the next three four weeks and then when it when it's found out not to be true they'll put this little section in the back so so um and people believe it like people open up a newspaper and like, oh fuck that must be true if they've written it in this newspaper that must be true so i'd love to see a rating system uh, if, if we can rate our uber drivers and they can rate us back like you know what it's like when you start to get to 4.2 and a half you start being a little bit nicer to your uber driver and you don't carry on <laughs> in the back when you're blind and like I don't know. There's no accountability towards journalism at, at scale where, where say if the, this, this section is written by Buzz Rothfield and he's a three and a half star style um, journalist, like you just sort of take page. it. Yeah. You, you read it, but you're like, Oh, like, is this guy like trustworthy or not? But so, he's a star. and you'd almost do it like a, like if, if, if everyone wants to rate Buzz Rothfield right now, everyone would give him a fucking one star, but you wouldn't do it that way. You do it almost like as the jury when you have to go to court and there's a bunch of like, 10 people that aren't emotionally attached to the game that mm. they sort of judge it on the facts. They remove emotion. Uh, they remove anything that Buzz has said about their personal favorite player or their, their personal favorite team and just make this purely based off journalism. And I feel that's a great way. What would your star rating be, J- Jackson? Oh, mate, I'm a walking two star. I don't want to know about that. <laughs> but see, where, do you, where do you draw the line from that? Then do you, okay, so what if I was to say to you, yeah, sweet, if journos have the star rating, what about players? So that's how we dictate contracts. So if Normie's a four star player, he earns in between this amount of money. You know what I mean? Like if we start doing star ratings for accountability in journalism, the accountability in football at the moment is dictated by the pay packet. So I reckon rated, there should be a star They get rated like, every game. They get rated every game. Like there's a section, oh, he was a seven out of 10 or he was an eight out of 10. Like, do you know what I mean? No, they get yeah, rated. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is it doesn't, that doesn't dictate anything other than what that journalist thinks about them. Like if there's a star rating on a journal, that's their reputation, that's their career. That's what, so Buzz is a four-star journalist. Like if, yeah. if, if Ice runs out and gets a two against the Warriors because they run over top of him and just target his inside shoulder, you're not a, <laughs> you're not a two-star player. You were in that game, but you know what I mean? Like, so, I mean, I, I don't want to see it just because I don't want to get absolutely killed, but um, it would be a bit of fun. Uh, yeah, but then like you pick and choose what articles you actually want to put on the back page. So obviously it's different because I've never been in the journalist. Um, like had the pressure of my boss going, fuck, I need a story right now. Give me something. But um yeah, I don't know. I, th- I think you'd start to think twice about what you read. That's just no, it'd be cool. I'd, I'd love to see a bit more accountability, man. Well, like, something it scares me, but it, it'd be dope. Coming from my previous world, like a big thing is obviously, um, let's say real estate, for example, you go and rate my agent.com. There's a whole section of where agents are getting their, um, whether you're a vendor or if you're a buyer, all the different reviews there. And it's not something that they, they go by, but it's, it's a reference point when they're trying to get new business. So if you, let's say, Jackson, you write an article, somebody reviews this, but it's almost like your work is being reviewed on a live basis. So you might have a mad article, which is a five star, but then if you have written something that is a one star, then which you I can have. specifically, I can't, um, what's the right word? Debate on that platform and apologize if you're wrong or something like that. I don't know. It's no, yeah, a, that'd be sick. I, I'm, I'm with it. I, I reckon it'd be fun as, and, and like you said, it'd, it'd give, it'd, it'd make people think twice before writing the, the staff writer, you know, bullshit articles, because that a lot of that comes from exactly that. Ice. The, the boss taps you on the shoulder. Cause you've been, you know, swiping through TikTok all day doing nothing. He's like, man, I need an article. And you go, fuck. Okay. Uh, Stevie man, I cheating. Like that's how dumb <laughs> shit like that happens. So yeah, yeah that'd be cool. But like, if you think about it, when you jump in an Uber, you can tell you can tell a good Uber driver from a bad Uber driver. He's in there. He's like trying to make chat like, before you're jumping out. He's like, yeah, five stars, eh? Five stars, and like you, you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, water in the back. Uh, there's the minty back there. It's fucking mad. The thing to think about the barrier for entry in an Uber is you're paying for that service. If you're just copying news, I'm just reading Daily Telegraph for free at the moment. That's a why. If I'm they got not- a, they got a they got a paywall as well. Like yeah. if you if you try and read their articles off the back of yeah, yeah but that's what I'm saying. Paywall comes up and go fucking sign up for a year. 
yeah. yeah. Well, that's why I like models like the athletic for like you're trying to get good. I've I've sent you the link for it before, Jackson. Mm. Where you're paying, I think I pay like sixty bucks a year US, um, and you subscribe to all your teams, and they have dedicated journalists around your team documenting the news. And nine times out of ten, they have the same access to, for say Liverpool. Like there's a Liverpool, the athletics journalist, and he goes to all the press conferences. You get the same news. And you've almost got a relationship with that particular journal. You do like your Q and A's with that journal before the game, after the game. It's quite an interesting model. Um, and I think that's, it's almost like the Netflix of news, the way that they sort of treated it, the athletics. So I find that a really cool model to go with, but obviously you need your, your Sydney morning Herald, you need your daily telegraphs, you need your stuffs. So um, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that sort of wraps up that topic. Um, sticking in the papers, we're almost like a little gossip column here. Um, we've had mm-hmm. Quaid in the Sydney Morning Herald, your mate Ice. Um, obviously, yeah, the first quotes about him playing league back in, I think it was November, December last year. And um, obviously, he's been hanging out with Tavita Pangai Jr. and throwing the NFL ball around. It looks, I think that's the Broncos facility, correct me if I'm wrong. So he's up there in Brisbane. He can't go back to play rugby in Japan for a couple of months. And then all of a sudden, a few quotes start popping around. I think Caesar's Palace on Insta did that real cool edit of him in the Broncos kit that then um, Jarrell Yao Yi shared it on Twitter and that made the Sydney Morning Herald article. So <laughs> there's this whole thing going around of Quay playing league. And now it's sort of materialised with him coming out and quoting on it as well. Um, I can bring up the quotes. I won't do it right now, but it's pretty cool. I reckon it'd be a mad thing to see him ever do it. Obviously, who knows where the season goes, but Ice, um, any 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 word from us, mate, in the DMs, or what do you got? Nah, I haven't, I haven't talked to him in a couple of weeks, but um, like, do I think he can play it? Yeah, obviously, I obviously can see him as like a six, but the transition into just cruising into an NRL competition is a lot harder, and it's like, um, I know a lot of people do it reverse, where they'll play NRL, say someone like Jordan Mapana, and they'll duck off to Japan, do a little almost quick cash grab and then sort of come back and, and come back to playing league. But I think the, coming back the other way is going to be a fucking such a lot harder. Like even, I think even transferring from super rugby straight away, if you don't have a rugby league background into the NRL, there's this, there's this fucking learning period that you're going to have to go through and this learning curve. And Quaze, if he does do this, which I do think he actually can, he will be able to, um, he will have to cut that learning curve straight in half. So it's not like he hasn't played league before. Like we played from five to 15, like together, like, Obviously, he had a great side and all that sort of stuff, but there's a massive step up to the NRL. So um, I see him touch on, he goes, oh, potentially I could play fullback, I could play centre. I don't see him playing those positions as well because fullback's a specialist position and where fullback actually makes their money is organising the defence line. And it's such He's a specialist position. Oh, it's not, it's not. It's just It's just different. It's just like um, like you won't have as much time. You sort of... I don't know, especially when you're on your um, try line and you're actually defending your fucking try line. That's a really important time. It does take time to get it. And then you have to have legs underneath you as well because you're knocking up the most Ks. And then not only that, like in rugby union, you, like if you're a fullback and you catch the ball, you can wait. You've got three or four different options. You can fucking kick it back. You can do that one of those mad high bombs and chase after and do those, you know, those little speckies like that. Yeah, yeah. You, don't ha- you, don't, you don't have that option in league. You've got one, you drop it off to your winger that's wrapping around if you're off the sideline or two, you're just going to have to run it back. And yeah. Corey sort of talks about, he goes, I'd happily play a fullback, but like my carry, I don't have a real strong carry. So um, they're sort of similar builds. They're quite like tall, quite lean. So I could just see teams kind of picking them up. But like a six with a fucking gun seven, I feel like he could really dominate, not dominate, but he could do a really good job from it. And just his kicking, like, yeah. Rugby unions can kick a fucking ball 10 times better than anyone in rugby like league, besides potentially like Adam Reynolds. Like, yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they just put the amount of length. Like, if you think about a 22 to a 22 kick, fuck, that's a long way. Like, we get a stiffy if we hit a 40 20. Like, like, <laughs> fuck, how good, was, how good was that kick? Like, fuck, look at us. Then that's a mad kick. And when you pull one off, it's fucking hectic. But they can fucking zing a ball like 22 to 22. And it is a different ball. It weighs it like a lot lighter. It's smaller. Like, you can really get a hold of it. But yeah, that, that'll be the interesting side of it. And I know Quaid, and I've talked to him about league, and the thing he excites him about um, league is the space. Like, there's this... Yeah, like, that's what he said in your potty. Mm, there's space there, and, and you, you, know, you know who you're going up against. And he said the hardest thing about league when the Wallabies played the Roosters and things, he goes, like, it's hard to tell the difference because Boyd Cordner looks like your centre and, like, your prop looks like your back rower. When in rugby union, you're like, you know who the lock is. He's that big, lanky, lanky yeah. kind of with the headgear on. So, yeah. um 
Yeah, I'd love to see him try it. I know it's something he really wants to do. In terms of professionalism as an athlete, in fact, there's probably none better, probably mm. except for Sonny Bill. Like, he's been on his carnival diet. Quaid's been on his carnival diet for like four months now. So, he's dedicated. That's all uh, well and good. He wants to play. Jackson, do you reckon there could be a club in for him? There's been about five or six clubs mentioned. Obviously, the Broncos yeah. is the big one with him being in Brisbane. I think um, I don't think he goes to the Broncos. From from what I know, they've already got their thirty man roster set, so I don't see how they can sign him. But um, I could be wrong. Titans, the, Titans, eh? Titans, yeah, surely. Mate, I think someone I, I saw an article this morning. Okay. Titans pulled out. I think Meninga said he's interested, but then Titans have said something that they they don't want him or something. Yeah, yeah I mean, they, at this this point in time, the Titans don't want to be talking about signing players. But if they've got a spot on their roster and Quade Cooper's available, I guarantee you they'll start sniffing around. So. Um, in terms of, like, do I think he'll play in NRL this year? I don't. I just, I, I just think this, this whole season's got way too many things to worry about and up in the air than, than a team taking a punt on a rugby convert at his age. It's not a knock on him because he's so fucking skilled. But, um, look, if you can, look, Quaid doesn't strike me as the kind of guy that's going to walk in the room and demand a million dollars. He wants to play in NRL. He wants to have a go. So if you can get him on a, you know, a bargain deal at a training trial basis, get him in the building and just get him running some opposed sessions and see how he goes, mm. Titans would be a great fit. Canterbury, you know, you don't know what's happening with Kiers. I know, you know, he should be back, but they don't have a lot of depth in the halves. Get him in Canterbury and get him to just watch Kieran Foran play and learn off that. Like, that'd be amazing for him, especially because Kiers understands the game so well. So Quaid's, they're not the same player. Quaid's very much more Benji than he is Kieran Foran, but he can watch how Kieran reads the defense and how Kieran sets things up and then, you know, put that Quaid Cooper spin on it. So I'm with Ice, definitely not fullback. (laughs) I know it, like... Like, I want to play fullback. Fullback looks so fucking fun, but the Get miles the those boys run. Oh, mate, it looks unreal. You look like you have a month, the most time and space in the world, but, you know, Tedesco and Tui Vasa Sheik and Chance, they make it look like they have a lot of time. There's, there's no fucking time in the league, man. Like, people think because they're 10 metres back that you've got all this time in the world. Defences are fucking up on you, especially when you're Quick. sweeping out the back and Georgie Tafua's coming in. Yeah, so... Bang. Um, Senna, Senna's a funny one. Like, I'm, I'm kind of a little bit... I would actually wouldn't mind seeing with Senna, especially to start with. Um, you know, he, he kind of strikes you as a bit of a Jared Croker in that he could be that sort of ball-playing Senna where he's setting up wingers. He's not going to be charging in on short lines and punching through holes, but he can beat guys with footwork. He's got a nice little kick on an edge, kind of like how Cornell used to use Wade Graham on the last. I'd shift to the short side and he'd drop it on the boot. So there's ways you can use him, man. He's an absolute Swiss Army knife as an athlete, so... Do I think he's going to play this year? No, but next year, maybe run around for Redcliffe or something. Like, definitely have a crack. Yeah, that, that's the other part I was just about to touch on. There's no, like, if he did sign up for NRL team on a train trial, I don't reckon um, he'd ask for money. No, he, he wouldn't even nah. be... He wouldn't be chasing money whatsoever. He just wants the challenge of it. But the thing that would really hurt him right now, there's nowhere where he can actually develop his game. So, say if he signed for the Titans, it's not like he can go play for Burley Bears for four weeks and get better because a Q Cup competition's gone. That's so, what I'm saying, say, 2021. Yeah, same thing happened with um, Hainsey over in San Francisco. He, he, like, after he got dropped from um, 49ers, he just goes, but there was nowhere for me to actually play to get better or to learn yeah. the game. And that's one of the reasons why he left. So I think that's the, that would be the hard, that's another hurdle that Quaid would have to come over because if he was, were to play NRL, it'd be in this fucking weird competition that we've got right now and you'd, you'd be thrown straight in. You haven't played league in fucking, what are we, uh, like 12 years. So yeah. interesting. Uh, the, the biggest the biggest caveat with all of this, obviously, is if it's a Japan club, even signs, ticks off and says, yeah, you can. If they say, no, we don't want you to risk an injury, then this whole conversation doesn't matter. So, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a great convo. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a great convo. Fun. Yeah, all righty. Um, moving on, I threw it out there because we've all been up to different things during ISO working from home. Um, wanted to touch on routines. I know ISO is something you're quite big on. You've been running. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so like what I'm trying to do is I am trying to do 15,000 steps a day and that's it. And then like 100 kettlebell swings, that's minimum. And then obviously like sometimes you try and go play one-on-one basketball with one of the boys and stuff like that. But just as a core base, like 15,000 steps, which ends up being 12.5 12 12 Ks and then that's it. And then come to work, cruise home, go for another walk. Just, yeah, cruise. Yeah. Jackson, <laughs> well, honestly, all my, all my ideas are coming from when I'm walking and all running. So it's Yeah. Bad. Jackson, you've been walking to the bins, putting your kit on. Mm, yeah, I'm doing 12,000 steps in this little room here, just going back and forth. I'm losing my fucking mind. But yeah, no, I've been doing TikTok. Doing TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Miso, I, I think your last one's up at 20,000 views or something. So we're, I'm probably going to retire soon and just live off here. But um, 
Yeah, no, I'm just been vintaging, man. It's actually been quite refreshing having a bit of time and obviously um, getting a peek behind the curtain at Ice's course. Um, it's kind of been giving me a few little hacks on kind of, or just not even hacks, just motivation for actually to, to fucking do it. Like I love, I love vintage, but with a, with a full-time job and with what we do, like it kind of sometimes gets pushed to the back burner. So now I've got no excuse. I'm fucking home all day surrounded by kit. Like I have to, I have to make content and I have to, you know, get it all up on the website and figure out this email marketing thing. So I've been spending my time working shockingly. Um, and I actually haven't consumed any fucking news in about three days. It's been super refreshing. So mm. uh, as far as steps, nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm on my ass, man. I need to get out and start fucking moving. Nah, how good. I've had the little home gym set up in the garage. You've got heaps of hectic kit over there. And it's, I said it on the potty that I did a few weeks back with ice. It's cool to be weight training again. I haven't weight trained for a while. And I'm sore this morning. So, yeah, that's why I was a bit rough getting what sort on. Of, what, sort of weight you th- what sort of weight are you throwing about, Luke? Yeah, give us oh, your numbers. Throw on some big stats, mate. <laughs> Dude, I, I deadlifted um, 100, and which for me is fucking – I haven't deadlifted in years, and I was able to deadlift 100. I think I did four reps. So, easy. I'm doing all right. Leave that on a warm up soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just I haven't weight trained for years, so it's cool to get back into it. And I found I ages ago I've been trying to restore my mountain bike to get that going. It's been sitting in the shed. So trip to the bike shop to try and fix the chain, fix the brakes, and I'll be flying around the hills in no time. You'll never know. <laughs> Hundred. Um, cool. Um, next one we had ice. You've got some big news on your little sports cards. You were DMing me about it last night. Look at the eyes light up. Drop the word sports card. I brought my little rated rookie for you here just to get you a little bit of a rouse for you. I'm actually trying to buy some of those at the moment, but I'm trying to join PS10. Nah, they're trying, to hustle me, bro. they're trying to hustle me. Um, no, nah, so so obviously we've got our card gangs ready. We've got all the money. We're about to pay for these box of cards. There's a seven card break. But what we are actually going to do, and it's kind of gone between like me and little Pappy, and little Pappy, he like he's all for the boys. He goes like, because we're doing a draft now. So we're going to do numbers on the draft. So if you get first round, if you get number one, you obviously get to pick the team that you go for. And it goes all the way down to 15. And then whoever gets the 15th choice gets the 16th and goes back and forth. But there was a bit of a, not an argument, but like a friendly debate on how it should run. And the two worst teams that you can actually get, uh, okay, because um, Lil Pappy, he, he does all the numbers on all the cards. And the two worst teams that you can actually get are OKC and Toronto Raptors. And he goes, oh, it just wouldn't be nice if um, like someone got the Raptors and OKC. Okay, so I was going, fuck that. Like, let's just put it all onto random. We, every, whoever, gets, um, whoever gets those two shit teams gets those two. And, that's, nah. and all the boys are starting to be like, it's not really fair. And like, all the Melbourne boys are coming in. And it's like, yeah, that's not really fair. Like, fuck, he's from Melbourne. You're trying to play fair now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we was that 10 years ago <laughs> fucking too late for that and then um but yeah so we sort of come up with this idea of um like the draft pick so we're gonna do like a mad spinny wheel and whoever gets first draft pick obviously second and you, you gotta we're probably gonna go live and you know you know the nba draft and i've got that little sound yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. so i found that on youtube last night and then we're actually gonna do that so probably record it on zoom and then whoever gets the first round draft pick gets to probably pick the fucking um pelicans and then we're just going to scale back from there and then there's going to be a live break soon so it's starting to get exciting because um all the boys are keen did um was it pappy that pulled last night on blunt i saw them post something and with all these hectic cards it was like oh nick has won this i wasn't sure if it was him nah uh, jerome's been getting a few uh zions he got the pelicans probably last week we all jumped in a break on saturday night and yeah he got he got he got a like, times strip- <laughs> three good zions so <laughs> what a saturday night huh? watching cards break but yeah, fuck it's been how hectic t- how times have changed normie's jumped in he there was one he? more spot so yeah so we've, we've um he's cut, bought that so that fucking rc cunt will probably get first round draft pick i reckon <laughs> <laughs> it won't even have to do with it have you got any you get you keep getting the vintage ones vintage kit haven't you no nah, no nah, yeah i'm not like i'm i'm definitely keeping keeping my ear to the ground and trying to figure this out um, it's like me. i'll be I'll, yeah i'll be getting in the game so i'm just wetting my beak buying cards here and there a little bit low key just seeing what i can do um like all the old ones i got i just got a box from this thrift shop for like five bucks got like 200 cards they're not worth anything they're just yeah. fucking cool they're like old school byron scott ones and that so um i got a dell curry card as well which is mad but like they're not really <laughs> worth much um but i just like them because i'm a freak and like old stuff but i'll definitely start sniffing around um yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting, like, especially, like, last night when we were doing a few articles on it and that, just, just researching, like, the value increase in that, like, that's the sort of shit that just trips me out, like, yeah, like, I love basketball, but the fact that these things are, you know, they, they're like a stock market, they go up and down with the players' performance, and the mm. team performance, and 
I'll tell you what, man, if no one wants OKC, okay, give me the boy Stephen Adams. I'm in. Yeah. I've got a Stephen but, Adams you can have with me. <laughs> but that's the great that's the great thing about sports cards is that there's so many levels that you can actually entrance in uh in, enter in and like one is just personal like f- people say start off with pc which is like personal collection and um say like little pappy he, he clicks like mark our fault and i'm like what the fuck are you collecting him for and some people are collecting draymond greens i thought like, bro what are you picking these guys for but like and people say that to me about lonzo so um like you can start with personal collection and then you can do it for money there's so many different levels that you can actually enter in and scotty mm. pippen's so scotty pippen cards have gone up 400 percent in the last like a month what is his name synonymous with jordan and all that that's coming through what do you know that new that new documentary is coming out at at the in a couple days actually yeah 19 that's what i was gonna gonna ask yeah and that's one of the strategies so whoever the gun in the team is you get the second best player so if you're going mavs like and luke is the guy start investing in chris Stapps because once they go to the finals and Chris Stapps pulls off a fucking game seven like Pal Gasol did back in our way with thing. He becomes what, like worth a bit of money. And like, there's so many different variables to it. And like people from different countries, they're worth a lot more money. Like Ruo Hachimura, he's from like, the black Japanese dude. Like his cars are worth two, 3,000 bucks at the moment. And he's not even killing it. It's just because he's like black and Japanese and playing for Washington. That's, there's so many different variables that you can go into it and different strategies and fucking hectic. Have you got into NFL ones more? I know you got Hainsy as a bit of a laugh, but did you have you looked into that? Like, yeah. So some of the boys are starting to go heavy, or not heavy, but they're starting to dabble into uh, NFL cards, and they they're much cheaper. So yeah. the guy the guy right now is obviously Patrick Mahomes, and I was looking at his cars last night, and even some of his PSA nine, some of them are going for like eight hundred bucks, which is like kind of a steal because he could he could be the guy. So if he keeps um, Aaron. Aaron Smith, he just got five PSA teams of a bunch of different of rookies. There's Aaron Rodgers in there. <laughs> uh, there was Aaron Rodgers in there. It's just like me Sonic. going to Kmart picking up the twenty dollar hobby pack or no retail yeah. box. They're actually they're all right, bro. Those Don Ross hobbies are all right. I know. Yeah. I loaded up on them. Yeah. I think is, uh, there, is the NFL are they worth less? Obviously, because there's fifty two players on the roster rather than eight. Or they, yeah, yeah, it's just culturally just not cooler. Like you only you only go after um quarterbacks. I think so, the thing with the NFL, because they've always, they've always got a helmet on, so it's always harder to brand themselves because you don't actually know. If you're just a, a random, you can't see who they are until they've taken yeah. their helmet off. And by Cam that Newton. point, you're not watching it. Cam but like, a, like, a, like a Kyler Murray, he's more expensive than um, Russell Wilson, which is like yeah, kind of weird. Cause, yeah, <laughs> like he's the man. He's, he's like the new kid coming through. But, but like Russell Wilson's like won Super Bowls. And like, do you know what I mean? So there's, like, there's guys that you think will be worth a fuckload of money, but they're actually not. And then there's these new kids that everyone's just sort of throwing money at. So I think Scope's going to really start to get into the NFL side of it. It's a lot cheaper too. Like I can see the value in NFL cards. I'm just not that into it. So Here goes possible. the whole NFL card market's about to tank if Scope's getting into oh, it. Oh, bro, into, into <laughs> pop finals at the moment. So been collecting up a bunch of those. I saw them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're sick, bro. They're so cool. They yeah. make the office look mad. And then I woke up this morning. I had like ten inboxes of people like, "Oh, bro, like, which one should I get?" And they've started buying pop vinyl. So they're only like twenty bucks. You meant to keep them in boxes, but want to get Lonzo out. I, was, I know what it's. I know what it's like to be in isolation. So fuck you. Can <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, big week for YKTR. We've got the the doozy tea, and I think you've. It's on a hoodie as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're just like, we haven't dropped anything in like two months. And obviously with all the sort of shit that's happening, everything's sort of backloaded. So we do got a new collection coming over. I think it's a jumping on the boat today. So it'll take two, three weeks to get here. Obviously build all the content for out. So we're not, we're not going to be like off the back of that. We haven't really dropped anything new in a month. So what we've done, we've grabbed a bunch of our go-to tees, which are our most popular tees. And then we've got some just locally produced hoodies and tees just to sort of fill that gap. So they should be dropping on, what's today, Wednesday? They should be dropping tomorrow. Look sick. Uh, we've got the mountain tea as well coming through, which have been locally produced. Uh, it was pretty mad because the screen, those screen printer guys that we've been using, yeah. they're like, oh, fuck. They were just like, oh, bro, thank you for like this work. This is like, one of the biggest orders that we've ever had. So it sort of feels good to put money back into the local economy and just yeah, give someone especially something Especially a time new. like this where they, they're probably feeling it, you know? Yeah, hundred percent. So it did feel good to do that. And it is fucking time consuming producing here, like touch points. Like they're like, I'll oh, we'll be done by them. Now it's fucking taking like this much longer. Then you have to get it back over. So um, there's a lot of touch points that have gone into it, but looking forward to it. Just looking forward to jo- dropping something new because we haven't done shit in ages. Yeah. And that's the first one that's come from my Photoshop onto a tee. So it's pretty cool to see that in the flesh. I've said that before, but that's mad. Let's go. Let's go. All right, let's wrap it up, boys. April 15th. Um, we'll be back on, what day is it? Wednesday? Yeah, we're back Friday. So thanks everyone. We'll see you then. All right, boys. See you later. 
Later.